Hey Exiles, Chronic Painless here with the first weekend update for the Blade Vortex League starter build guide. This build has held up pretty well in the face of what has surely been one of the most punishingly difficult patches in recent memory. Even though these arch nemesis monsters have been nerfed significantly since day one of the league, they still provide a steep challenge that can seem downright unfair if you're not prepared. So let's prepare. First, I want to talk about what you can adjust or highlight to improve the build itself. And then I'll go over some gameplay tips that should help you tackle even the toughest arch nemesis combos. As for the build, tanking up even earlier and on even less investment is now highly recommended. With a Charisma Anoint and an Eater of Worlds implicit on your helm, you should be able to drop Herald of Purity and Precision for Determination and Defiance Banner, even without Ashes of the Stars. Add in a Granite Flask with increased armor and equip a Veil Molten Shell, and I promise you'll feel a hell of a lot tankier. Another adjustment you can make for the sake of tankiness is specking into the Bastion of Elements Ascendancy. Harder Destruction has been made less essential by virtue of the fact that unique monsters no longer pose the biggest threat in late game mapping. Bosses are often pushovers compared to juiced up rares, so giving up boss damage for the sake of survivability sounds like a very good trade. But surviving is still only half the battle. You've gotta deal some damage. When it comes to increasing your damage output against arch nemesis monsters, the most important thing to consider is the prevalence of high resistance and ailment immunity. These monsters make Shaper of Storms significantly less viable than the Mastermind of Discord and Heraldry combo. Not only are shocks less effective than penetration when monsters have more than zero base resistance, many monsters can't be shocked at all. Thankfully, exposure prevention is still only available as a map mod and can simply be avoided. Another option to consider in light of the widespread ailment immunity is removing hypothermia support, since it provides no damage against enemies who can't be chilled. This is especially bad for us because these monsters also can't be frozen and have high cold resistance to boot. This means we need extra damage more than ever, and hypothermia isn't providing anything. Even if you sacrifice some POB damage by swapping to a different support gem, you'll have more actual damage when you need it most. In a similar vein, Brittle Ground might be too good for its own good. This sounds weird, so hear me out. Brittle Ground is so powerful that relying on it has arguably become too dangerous given how often it gets taken away. Cold ailment immune monsters are the biggest threat to our build by a wide margin, so losing 30-40% to 40 of our critical strike chance against them can be disastrous. Scorched Ground, on the other hand, is exactly what we need against these monsters, reducing their jacked up resistances. It's certainly counterintuitive, but it's almost as if Brittle Ground's effectiveness has been judo flipped. The stronger something is, the more we feel it when it's taken away. That covers the changes that can be made passively to the build itself, so now I want to go over my top tips for actually playing with Blade Vortex. Arch Nemesis modded monsters demand that we do some gaming, but fortunately, the strategies we need to employ are quick to learn and easy to master. This league has truly stressed the importance two aspects of BV Elementalist and Occultist playstyle that I've touched on before. Number one, the importance of cruising at 10 blades, even while casually mapping. Because Blade Vortex's damage scales exponentially with the number of blades you have out, maintaining 10 blades is essential to avoiding a massive reduction to your damage output. Thankfully, this is easily achieved if you remember the importance of your skill duration to seal generation ratio. For a more in-depth explanation, see this section of my video from patch 3.17. To summarize, as long as you generate 4 Unleash Seals in less than half of your skill duration, you should be able to maintain 10 blades while only casting once every few seconds. Once you practice this a bit, the timing becomes second nature, and you'll find yourself naturally falling into a comfortable rhythm and absolutely blasting through maps. I can't stress enough how much this can change the way the build feels to play. The second aspect of the playstyle that has been stressed is the importance of letting your Veil BV do the work for you sometimes. I've said before in previous videos, but I'll say it again. When you're getting bullied, don't fight back on your own. Get your big brother to come in and kick some ass for you. Against truly terrifying packs, it's entirely reasonable to run away, charge your Veil skills up again, and go back to finish them off. For less dangerous but still scary packs, diving in and out around the cooldown on your Molten Shell will provide simple benefit. Which brings me to my last point, managing your flame dashes. The days of mindlessly spamming spacebar to go fast are over and we must now save our flame dash charges for gap closing and escapes only. In other words, don't use flame dash to travel. It's now exclusively a combat mobility tool. 
The primary way we want to utilize Flame Dash in this context is to get us to the monsters we've aggroed before they can start launching attacks. It takes some getting used to, but often the best way to survive against a pack of monsters is to dive right into the middle of all of them so you can start freezing and killing them as soon as possible. We also want to make sure we're saving one Flame Dash charge for defensive purposes whenever possible. Blinking out of danger is a huge part of the gameplay that arch nemesis monsters are meant to necessitate, so don't be frivolous with your flame dashes and get caught with zero charges. Learning to play around this cooldown and your molten shell is a bit of a process, but once you get the hang of it, the game will feel almost as easy as it did before patch 3.18. That's all for this video, but stay tuned for more updates as I continue to unravel the mysteries presented by patch 3.18. This build has been a ton of fun to play so far, and I am certainly not done yet. But good luck out there, BV enthusiasts, and as always, stay painless.